You're watching WMAR. WMAR 2 News at 5. And a good evening to you. I'm Jamie Costello. And I'm Brittany Verner in for Kelly Swoop. Welcome to WMAR 2 News at 5. It's being compared to Rodney King. Video of police beating Tyree Nichols is expected to be released tonight. The calls from his family for peace and what needs to be done to reform police departments nationwide. I'm Brittany Verner with your news at 11. As people are getting ready to ring in the new year, gunfire rang out in West Baltimore. And tonight, a family is going into 2023 without their seven-year-old son after he was shot and killed. WMAR News' is Ashley McDowell is at police headquarters with this heartbreaking story. Ashley. Plus, a game they call the classic tips off tonight. We talked to one of the teams about what it means to play the greatest women's sporting event in Maryland. And now it's time for a check on our weather. Let's get over to meteorologist Cesar Cornejo. Cesar, I saw some sunshine today. Are we seeing that this weekend? <laughs> Brittany, we are. One person was killed and two others hurt after a shooting. Police say they responded to the call around 820 tonight. Crews rushed a man to the hospital where he died. BPD says two other men were also shot, but the officers found them at other spots nearby. Homicide detectives are investigating this shooting tonight. And we are less than 48 hours away from celebrating the start of the new year. But now we're looking at some milestones city leaders have made this year. I sat down with Mayor Brandon Scott for a look back and ahead at what's to come. Violence in Baltimore is the longest standing public health challenge in the city. And for many neighbors, things don't feel as if they are changing for the better. We know uh, that it's, it's people are impatient. I'm impatient with how we can deal with this and we're gonna move as fast as possible. But we know we cannot make the mistakes of the past. Mayor Scott says since the launch of the Group Violence Reduction Strategy or GVRS in early 2022, in the Western District, which is historically the most violent in the city, there has been a 30% decrease of homicides and shootings. That's a great start that we're looking forward to expanding uh, in the beginning of next year to the Central and Southwest Districts. And although it's the third time this method has been attempted in Baltimore, it's the first time they started off small and tested it before expanding. And Scott says it starts with meeting those people who are most likely to be a victim or perpetrator of violence. We want you to stay alive. We want you to change your life. We're going to bring the resources to do that, whether it be job training, career, school education, drug counseling, uh, uh, behavioral health, or housing, whatever it is. But if you don't take us up on that, then you'll feel the full weight of local, state, and federal uh, uh, law enforcement. This year, State Streets has mediated over 2,000 potentially violent conflicts. And even though Baltimore City Police are understaffed, he says they've seized more guns than before. When you see our police department seizing over 2,400 guns, more guns than they seized when they had 500 more cops, that's significant work that's happening. Scott says one of the most frustrating parts of his job is seeing a revolving door of criminals committing the same crimes. So what can people expect to see going into the new year that will give them hope for what's to come? As we onboard a new state's attorney and a new governor, we know that we're going to have deeper partners on the other end because I think it's also critical for our residents to be reminded that once our police officers go out and make an arrest for folks who commit murder or have guns or commit a carjacking and they go to other parts of the system, that's where we have to work with other people. That's where we have to hold uh, other folks accountable and build better systems on the back end. Laying a solid foundation, being consistent with violence prevention, and putting pressure on the people who have the authority to keep criminals behind bars is what Scott says it's going to take to see a significant change. We kept changing police commissions. We changed this leadership. We changed that leadership. And when you look at cities around the country that have had sustained uh, reductions in violence, one of the things that they have is leadership is stable, strategy is stable. And the mayor is hopeful that once those leadership changes happen, violence in Baltimore will drop even further. I would love to be today to be further along, not having a 1% reduction in homicides and a 4% reduction in non-fatal shootings to have those percent of drops be a lot heavier. But this is a foundation. Now, Baltimore is one of the cities that the White House and National League of Cities are turning people towards concerning how to build a community violence intervention ecosystem. Mayor Scott said aside from the crime, something else that he's most looking forward to next year is the $41 million ARPA investment into Rec and Parks, moving many of the projects out of the design phase and into breaking ground. Cesar, I think that people want to know how is the weather going to be on Sunday for the game, most importantly. <laughs> well, Brittany, Sunday's looking great. 
Well, right now at Towson University's CQ Arena, they are getting ready for one of the biggest girl high school basketball games of the year. Mercy takes on Maryville in the second annual contest known as the Classic. The event is dubbed the largest girls sporting event in Maryland. I forgot to buy a ticket and I'm feeling lucky. Right. I, I unfortunately didn't buy one either, Brittany, but you know what? We have some lucky numbers here. Oh, in honor of restaurant week, Caesar and I were talking about a best crab cake. So <laughs> where have you had your favorite crab cake? I would say Ocean City, but I think the drinks and maybe the salty air helped me out on that one. What oh. about you? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I would say Papa's. Papa's has been my best crab cake so far. Nice. Not just because it's Oprah's, Oprah's favorite, but <laughs> because I love it. <laughs> but Baltimore experienced another violent weekend as police are investigating eight shootings that took place Saturday and early Sunday. And tonight we are expecting newly released body camera footage in Tyree Nichols' death. And it allegedly shows the beating death of the 29-year-old during a traffic stop earlier this month. And those who have already seen the video, they have called it appalling. Yeah, now officials in Memphis are preparing for possible riots in response. ABC's M. Gwen is in Memphis with the latest. And longtime ABC journalist Barbara Walters has died at the age of 93. Walters joined the ABC News in 1976. Three years later, she became a co-host of 2020, and in 1997, she launched The View. She appeared on The View until 2014. During her career, she was the first to interview Monica Lewinsky in 1999. ABC says she won 12 Emmy Awards during her career, 11 of those during her time at ABC. And it's a spot over in Highland Town offering a safe space for young refugees. Yeah, Soccer Without Borders does it through playing soccer. But the Thank you, Caesar. Well, we are just a couple hours away from one of the biggest high school basketball games of the year. Mercy takes on Maryville in what's known as the Classic. Uh, yesterday, we introduced you to the Maryville Lions. Tonight, WMAR 2 News' Sean Stepner checks in with the Mercy Magic. It's been a month-long battle over counting mail-in ballots early in the general election. And now it's over after an appeals court. Court judge heard the last arguments today. WMAR 2 News' Kendall Green joins us in the studio. Well, the holiday travel nightmare surrounding Southwest might be coming to a close. The airline says it has a full schedule tomorrow. Tonight, health officials are urging you to get your home tested for radon gas. The deadly fume is often found in homes during the winter months. WMAR 2 News' Nordea Lewis spoke with medical experts about why this should be at the top of your New Year's resolution. And we are taking an in-focus look at the data as part of our commitment to digging deeper than the headlines. This is a map on the Maryland's Department of Health's website that shows the average measurements of radon levels in different areas across the state. And to put some things into perspective that the mayor mentioned into context, we're taking an in-focus look at some of the homicide numbers over the years. This is data pulled from BPD, which shows a slightly lower number for this year as it only goes through December 23rd. Looking at the numbers since 2015, the year with the most homicides was 2019 with 348. And 2018 had the fewest with 309. This year, our 309th record homicide victim was Ralph Johnson on December 1st. And over in Baltimore, police have made a big ghost gun bust to end the year. These are pictures Baltimore police shared with us. They say yesterday afternoon they seized 20 ghost guns and ammo from a home in the McElderry Park neighborhood in southeast Baltimore. They also took a 3D printer and rolls of material for that printer that could be used to make more weapons. Kevin Wallace was arrested in the bus. Police say he also had a Christmas tree decorated with ghost guns and parts for them. Commissioner Michael Harrison says the city has seized 477 ghost guns this year. And the pandemic has done a number on our kids. A new report from the National Center of Education reveals the first score decline in reading since 1990 and the first ever score decline in math. Experts say it's imperative to keep kids learning all year round. From the physical to the mental and all the work in between, the way we work is changing. With the changing work environment, both employees and employers will be evolving. It's looking a little aggressive for New Year's Eve Saturday night, so Annapolis is moving their fireworks from Saturday night to Sunday afternoon at 5.30. And Volkswagen is recalling thousands of Beatles over a potentially dangerous airbag issue. The automaker says this affects model years 2015 and 2016. Subscribe to WMAR2 News on YouTube for daily videos.
Police officers are gathering information on how marijuana impacts drivers. It's in part to get officers ready for when the drug is fully legalized this summer. Yeah, that led to a bit of an unusual scene in Montgomery County. People lighting up with full police approval. Jay Croft with our ABC station in Washington shares how people were more than happy to help the research. Wow, well, that officer says law enforcement leaders want to share this data with lawmakers. They hope it will help them determine the best ways to measure marijuana impairment. And Americans are feeling a bit better about the economy. That's according to the University of Michigan's Consumer Sentiment Index. The survey is used to estimate consumers' future spending and saving. Their numbers are up 9% from December. Despite the increase, the number is still low historically. The index also showed consumers are still cutting back on spending in preparation for a potential recession. And WMAR2 News is your voice for veterans. There's a bill on the table in Annapolis to help vets and their spouses when it comes time for them to be laid to rest. The bill would pay for spouses to be buried with veterans. This would cover the five state veteran cemeteries. More concerns at Baltimore City Schools tonight after a student was caught with a gun. On WMAR 2 News at 6, we're speaking with frustrated parents who tell us school is supposed to be safe. It's been quite the week already at Baltimore City Public Schools, and today an arrest of a teen with a gun adding to it. WMAR 2 News' Kendall Green was back on another campus this week. He joins us with the latest on this arrest. Kendall. Well, it's a video that has been compared by those who have seen it to the 1991 Los Angeles beating of Rodney King. And tonight, the entire public will be able to watch. Tensions are high in Memphis and across the nation as we await the release of body cam footage. A former Baltimore City police officer who killed his stepson and stuffed his body inside a crawl space is going to prison. Today, an Anne Arundel County judge sentenced Eric Bakes to 42 years in prison. Encoding is not just an elective anymore but an essential base of knowledge, like the scientific method or the sentence structure. But many schools lack access to the resources needed to practice it. Today is Holocaust Remembrance Day. Many survivors have told their stories, but it's been nearly 80 years since the end of the Holocaust. As survivors pass away, fewer and fewer are around to share their firsthand experiences. National correspondent Ben Shamiso shows us how one museum is using technology to keep survivors' memories alive once they they are no longer with us. Well, World News Tonight with David Muir is coming up. Here's a look at some stories you can expect to see at 6.30. Tonight, the fatal Memphis traffic stop. Well, three Baltimore area restaurants are getting very high praise. They are all semifinalists for James Beard Awards, often called the Oscars of the food world. Yummy. And let's see what the weather is looking like with meteorologist Cesar Cordonejo. Cesar, I saw the sun peaking today. <laughs> are we getting some sunshine this weekend? We are, Brittany, at least for the first half. And it's Friday. We have some ideas for some things to do with the family in our weekend planner. So if you're looking to tap into your creative side, the Baltimore Museum of Arts has lots of options. They offer several downloadable art projects and craft ideas inspired by its collection. You can make a mini sketchbook, make a clay pot, or even try mindful drawing. You can find all of the instructions on their website. And you can get your grub on this weekend, too. Baltimore City's Restaurant Week starts today. Dozens of restaurants will be offering specials or deals from now until February 5th. This is also the last weekend for Baltimore, Howard, and Harford County Restaurant Weeks. You can see the whole list on our website at WMAR2News.com. And new tonight, a 21-year-old man is dead after a shooting on East Shire Drive. The shooting happened around 9 tonight. Crews rushed that man to shock trauma where he died. Right now, police say they are looking for a heavyset man. We'll bring you more information on this shooting at a later date. Sadly, Brazil's iconic soccer great has died after a battle with colon cancer. Widely regarded as one of soccer's greatest players, Pele spent nearly two decades enchanting fans and dazzling opponents, winning a record three World Cups for Brazil along the way. He also helped popularize the sport here in the U.S. In 2021, Pele found out he had colon cancer and had been fighting it ever since. He was 82 years old. With sweeping gun legislation at the national level and strong opposition from gun rights advocates, it can be hard to cut through the chatter and know what truly works to reduce gun violence. According to a Pew Research poll conducted last year, most Americans favor regulations that prevent people who are mentally ill from purchasing guns. Most also favor background checks and creating a federal database to track all gun sales in the U.S. 
Not only is inflation hammering pocketbooks, but the stock market is also hammering savings and investment accounts. The current market downturns is one of the largest since the start of the pandemic. And as Dan Grossman shows us, it's affecting how and when people are choosing to retire. <laughs> We're winners over here. Right. No, definitely. Are we and, winning with the weather? Uh, so for tomorrow after the <laughs> showers, yes. And then we unfortunately start to lose again with that high heat. So, Caesar, what's your favorite restaurant here? I, you put me on the spot. I, don't, I wouldn't even know what to say right now. <laughs> I, I do take recommendations, though. So if anyone has right. them, they can email me, Twitter me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to tell you later. But that's all for us right now. You can always get the latest news online at WMARTnews.com and on your favorite streaming devices. World News with Dave Vermeer is up next. And make sure you're back here at 7. We'll see you then. Awesome, awesome. Well, that's it for WMAR 2 News at 6.30. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> There's your forecast for the weekend, and that is all for us. Jimmy Kimmel is up next. You're watching WMAR.